you can create stairs that automatically span multiple floors. The only prerequisite is that all your floors must be equal in height. Remember that stairs do not create openings in floors, so you'll need to create any necessary openings. When working with multi-story stairs, the easiest way to do this is to create a shaft opening. In this model, before I can place the stair, I need to prepare the stairwell by creating a shaft. On the architecture ribbon, in the opening panel, I'll click the shaft tool. Revit goes into sketch mode and the ribbon changes to the Modify Create Shaft Opening Sketch contextual ribbon. You create a shaft by sketching its boundaries and specifying its base and top constraints. In the Draw panel, on the ribbon, I'll click the Rectangle tool, then draw a rectangle with one corner at the intersection of the left end of the horizontal reference plane and the wall, and the other corner at the interior intersection of the walls in the upper right corner of the stairwell. Notice that I could lock constraints to the walls if I wish. In the Properties palette, I'll set the base constraint to level 1 with a base offset value of minus 1 foot, or minus 300 millimeters in the metric file, and a top constraint up to level 6 with a top offset value of 2 feet, or 600 millimeters. Then, I'll click Finish Edit Mode to create the shaft. Notice that the shaft object is selected, so it is highlighted. If I switch to the Structural Core 3D view and zoom in on the building core, you can see the shaft I just created. It has grips at the top and bottom that you can use to adjust the vertical extents of the shaft, or you can adjust the parameters in the Properties palette. Now that the shaft has been created, I'll switch back to the Level 1 Stair Plan view. I'll switch to the Architecture ribbon and start the Stair by Component tool from the Circulation panel. I'll draw a straight run using the vertical reference planes. I'll click at the lower end point of the vertical reference plane on the left, and then move the cursor up until 11 risers have been defined. Then I'll move the cursor over the reference plane on the right, and then move down until I see an alignment line that lines up with the first riser down from the end of the first run of stairs. I'll click to start the next run and move the cursor down to create the remaining risers, and then click. Notice that the end of the stair should line up with the start, and the first riser on the return run starts one tread width down from the landing. I can make the stair a bit wider. I'll hold down Control and select each run. In the Properties palette, I'll change the width to 42 inches, or 1,100 millimeters in the metric file. Then, I'll click Finish Edit Mode. I'll make sure that the stair and railings are selected. Then, I'll switch to the Structural Core 3D view, and in the View Control bar, I'll use the Temporary Hide Isolate tool to isolate those elements. I'll click Modify to deselect everything, and then click the stair. In the Properties palette, I'll click on the multi-story top-level parameter field. Expand the drop-down and choose Level 6. The stair and its associated railings are immediately duplicated to the other levels. Note that you can still edit the stair by selecting it and choosing Edit Stairs in the contextual ribbon. Any changes you make will be propagated vertically. If you edit the railing, any changes you make will also be propagated to the other levels. I'll switch back to the Level 1 Stair Plan view and create a section through the stair. On the Quick Access Toolbar, I'll click the Section tool. In the Type Selector, I'll change this to a Wall Section. I'll click below the stair to position the section head so that the section cuts through the right side of the stair, and then click above the stair tower wall to position the end of the section line. If the far section clip is way off to the left, zoom out and drag it back so that it extends just slightly beyond the wall on the left of the stair. Then I can right click on the section callout and choose Go to View to open the new section view. Now I can see the section through the stair. I'll zoom in on the first floor level. I'll use a crossing window selection to select the wall with the door in it, the door, 
and the wall cut in section, the wall that appears black in this view. Since I also selected the grid line, in the contextual ribbon, I'll click the filter tool to open the filter dialog and clear the grids checkbox. I've now got three items selected, two walls and a door. I'll click OK. In the clipboard panel on the ribbon, I'll click Copy to Clipboard. Then I'll expand the Paste Split button and click Aligned to Selected Levels. In the Select Levels dialog, I'll select Levels 2 through 6 and then click OK. I'll open the default 3D view, right click on the view cube and choose Orient to View, Sections, Section 1. Then I'll orbit the view so I can see the multi-story shaft and stairs that I've created. 